Hi, this is James C2. Welcome back to our latest tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to look at Microsoft Dynamics CRM's security model, in particular, users and security roles. This tutorial will be done in two parts. You can skip to part two by clicking on the card link near the end of this tutorial. In the first part of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up the security role for one of our users called Daisy. In the second part of the tutorial, we're going to show you how the security role can impact on the records and functions that Daisy and other users can fulfill within the CRM. So let's start by looking at how to apply a security role to our user who's called Daisy. We do that by navigating to the settings area and within settings, we need to find security. Within security, I can see a list of users by clicking on the users link. At the moment, we only have two set up. So we're going to look at how to look at the roles which Daisy has. So I will select her record and click on manage roles. And we can see that there are none applied to Daisy as yet. Daisy works in our marketing department. So I'm going to assign her the role of marketing professional and click OK. So we can see that the marketing professional role has been applied to Daisy. But what rights does that role have? So let's go back to security and click on security roles and we will see them listed here. And we can see there are a few out of the box security roles. Security roles can be created from scratch. If desired, it's much easier to copy an existing role which has roles and security levels which are similar to the ones you require and take a copy of that and then amend it. It's a lot quicker, just a quick use. Tip. So if we look at the marketing professional role, we can open the record by highlighting and double clicking, which will open the security role wizard. A few things to consider here. First is that the wizard is broken down into tabs. First tab just controls the details, the role name and which business unit this is applied to. So you can have different security roles for different business units. So a marketing professional in one business unit may have different roles to the marketing professional in a different business unit. The second tab shows the core records and this controls the user's rights and security privileges to access and work on all of the record which can be accessed through different work areas within the CRM. Marketing controls things that only appear in marketing. Sales controls things that only appear in sales. So let's look at what the icons mean. Let's look at the account record. Now we can see that the account entity, this user has this symbol on the account under create. Now what this means is this user can create accounts which belong to themselves. If you look at the key at the bottom of the screen, you'll see non-selected user, business unit, parent child business units, and organization. That controls the access to the records that belong to that level of security, if you like. For example, at the moment, under account for create, we have this icon here, which shows that they can create records that belong to them. This user under the read column for account can see a read accounts that belong to anyone in the entire organization. They can also edit them because they have the same icon, the green icon. If you look at activity for write, so write access on activity, this user can edit activities which belong to themselves and anyone else else in the same business unit. So in the grid, you can see the entity listed down the left hand side, the access rights across the columns, and at the bottom, you can see the level of penetration of the rights. So to show you that in action, what I want to do for Daisy is we want to make Daisy and anyone else with this role able to create a quick campaign within CRM. Now quick campaigns are held within the marketing area so I navigate to that tab and I can see that the create quick campaign icon is ticked. It is green so Daisy can create quick campaigns for anyone in the organization. However in Daisy's role we do not want her creating new cases. However we want Daisy to be able to access records of cases which have been opened by customers but we don't want her to be able to create new ones. So let's look at the service area of CRM. So I navigate to the service area. Here I can see that because the create 
privilege on case is set to none selected, Daisy cannot create cases. If I wanted her to be able to create cases, I simply click on the icon and we can see the icon changes. I don't want that, so I'll cycle back through so that the icon says none selected. We also want Daisy to be able to read cases that belong to anyone in the organization, and we can see that that is the case there. We also want Daisy to be able to update or edit or write on case records in case she has contacted that person. At the moment, that is set to none selected, so Daisy does not have this privilege. We want to grant her the privilege. If I grant her the privilege by clicking the icon once, she can only edit cases which belong to her. Now, Daisy can't create cases, so it would be very unlikely that there would be any that belong to her. I want to set this to organization level, so I keep clicking until we get the green icon, and then we save and close. Now, it's important to note that we have updated the security role, which means anyone with that security role assigned to them now has the privileges we've assigned to Daisy. Now that we've seen that in action and how to apply security roles, we can move on to part two of this tutorial which will show you this in action and the benefits of having security roles set up in your CRM. Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed the video, please like it. If you are interested in getting in contact with us, please don't hesitate to do so and I look forward to speaking to you in part two of this tutorial.